Hi guys, I'm Tyler Lawnen, the Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities here with your Cabot Weekly Review. It is Friday, February 16th, and it is about 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time. We have the chart of the S&P 500 index here, as you can see, literally flat on the day. Um, that puts it pretty much flat on the week as well. Uh, NASDAQ a little bit weaker and down marginally today, uh, but the kind of leading story of the week has been small caps. S&P's small cap 600 index here. A uh, bit of a messier chart, no, not nearly as clean of a trend as the last two, um, but it is the leading index of the of the week, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, it was a pretty heavy week for economic data. You know, so retail sales got some attention. They were down more than expected in January, partially to be blamed on a drop in building materials, garden equipment, and supplies. That's kind of been written off as a result of seasonal weather um, and adjustments. Initial unemployment claims were down slightly to about 212,000 during the February 9 week. That implies the unemployment rate remains below 4% where it's been for 25 straight months. Uh, if you don't care about all those numbers, the bottom line is unemployment is low, job market remains strong. Really the big news of the week though has been the inflation numbers, CPI and PPI. Um, began early in the work on early in the week on Tuesday. Uh, with CPI for January came out uh, before the market opened, caused some initial market indigestion because it was higher than expected. That did smooth out over the course of the week as the big picture trends really came back into focus. So we're talking softening wage growth, rising productivity, goods disinflation. And of course, falling inflation expectations and lower interest rates. This morning, though, market was indicated to open higher. The January PPI inflation report number came out. Market dipped in the pre-market and then opened lower because that was a little hotter than expected. Um, seen a little bit of a repeat of Tuesday's actions now, although not nearly as dramatic. Um, market is really just digesting these reports and they're trying to project out the impacts to the core PCE inflation number, which is the Fed's preferred measure. That comes out toward the end of the month. For the record, after Tuesday's CPI report, PCE expectations held steady. Uh, the three month annualized rate is expected to be just over 2%. So we'll have to see maybe by the end of today or Tuesday, um, because Monday's a holiday, we'll, we'll get some sort of aggregate numbers on where PCE expectations fall. But kind of for, you know, big picture, stepping back, the bottom line is market continue, continues to digest this inflation data and is looking forward, you know, four, six, eight, twelve 12 months. Um, the big market tailwinds continue to be, there's a lot of money in money market funds, over $6 trillion. Uh, corporate buybacks are helping to fuel some of the market um, upside, I think. And then expectations for rate cuts this year, albeit a bit later than expected a few months ago. On that note, as far as rates goes, I think the, you know, the market's feelings really can be kind of summed up by yesterday's commentary from Atlanta Fed President Bostic, who basically said, you know, in a nutshell, there's no reason really to mess with the federal funds rate right now. Risks appear to be pretty balanced. They're high, they're restrictive. We don't want them to be there for too long. But then again, we don't want inflation getting stuck above 2%. And there is potential out there that business demand is high and we could see an uptick in inflation if rates don't remain restrictive. So, you know, I don't know what you, there's no real like punchline to come away with that from other than a little bit higher for longer. So now the market is expecting the first rate cut in June. That was at about a 52% probability at about 8.30 this morning. Um, other big thing out there, you know, are we in a tech bubble, right? We've seen a lot of tech stocks just soaring AI theme um, pretty pretty well under, uh, well, we think understood, but maybe not. Um, definitely driving a lot of bullish activity. Um, from Bank of America, some of the recent flow data shows the biggest outflow from cash in eight weeks, about $18.4 billion, with the vast majority of that going into stocks and bonds. So, again indication that that tailwind I talked about is still going on. Most of that is going to tech equity funds, leaving a lot of the rest of the market, not a lot to work with. Bank of America said the S&P 500's breadth is now the worst since 2009. So that is kind of comparable to 
other high-profile bubblish times. Um, Magnificent Seven currently trading at 45 times trailing earnings versus a 65 times ratio for the NASDAQ and the height of the dot-com bubble in 2000. Um, so those are certainly a bit concerning. I don't want to discount those concerns at all. Um, but on the other hand, while potentially stretched positioning in tech could be a contrarian indicator, there are other areas like small caps that are being largely ignored. So as you can see here, chart of the S&P 600 index, we should have the Russell 2000 here, which looks more or less the same. As I said, best performing index this week, despite this 4% fall um, on Tuesday after that inflation report came out. But, you know, it popped right back up and uh, is the leading index of the week. Um, Goldman Sachs has some data suggesting the hedge funds are warming up to small caps net buying and Russell 2000 stocks in 15 of the last 16 days. And if we zoom out, you can see small caps really have underperformed for several years now. So, um, I mean, we could go down the rabbit hole on this, but assuming interest rates come down, economy, soft landing scenario, it is a pretty good backdrop for small caps, um, which I'm certainly looking forward to and I'm, I'm in that camp to think that small caps uh, have a lot of upside potential to go from here especially relative to uh, some of the other market indices all right um, let's move on to stocks so a little bit of a scattergun approach today um, just because of earnings I've basically been looking at a lot of the good reactions trying to digest those and project out what else could work in other areas of the market so um, Pretty much all the charts that you're going to see now are going to look fantastic. Um, we'll start with, oh, there's the bond yield, 10-year yield. Um, applied materials today up about 8%, uh, 830, I'm sorry, 100 and almost 70 billion market cap company. Uh, semiconductor, obviously, stocks up due to a beat and raise thanks to a quicker than expected semiconductor recovery and rebound in China demand. Uh, that's notable. Um, moving on to crypto brokerage. Uh, so Coinbase, kind of blast from the past name here, um, sort of left for dead back during 2023. Up pretty nicely today, pushing up against its highs from uh, December on solid transaction revenue growth. And then also Robin Hood, more or less the same picture, uh, but that stock is breaking out to new highs or new multi-month highs at least. Again, strong transaction revenue led by crypto uh, and options trading. As far as retail, I talked a little bit about that. Kind of a self-help recovery story here in Crocs. Uh, company has a market cap of about $7.3 billion, so firmly in mid-cap territory. Um, there's a lot that we could go into here, but kind of big picture the Crocs brand is doing okay, whereas they have this Hey Dude brand that they acquired that has really been struggling because inventory flooded the market and it's it's still out there. But that should be cleaned up by the middle of this year. Uh, so again, a bit of a self-help self, self -help recovery story. Uh, we'll see if there's any carry through here uh, with this stock, which is up to multi-month highs. In the travel and leisure space, Airbnb, obviously a well-known name, uh, 100 billion market cap was down a little bit on earnings, uh, had a softer Q1 guide, um, some potential margin compression, although broadly speaking, analysts are pretty positive on travel demand and the company announced a stock buyback program. So it was up decently yesterday, uh, 6%, I think. And then today it's, you know, it's down marginally, but that's one to watch that it hasn't gone, you know, completely bonkers. And then Toast, ticker symbol here is T-O-S-T, -T, market cap of about $12 billion. Uh, so technology for restaurants to help them, you know, take bookings, reservations, payments, all that. Um, up about 17.5%. Good guidance. Also some cost cutting, which the, the cost cutting operational efficiency thing is a major theme. Uh, I think it was Morgan Stanley was out kind of analyzing transcripts and saying that that, that um, 
term operational efficiency is just popping up much more regularly than than it's normal. Uh, I talked a little bit in um, January when I did my last video about defense stocks. Here we have uh, Lidos. I don't know if I always pronounce that right. Um, but anyway, the ticker symbol is LDOS. Uh, almost 17 billion market cap company. It's not pure play defense. It plays in some other markets as well, uh, but had a decent report to earnings and stock is continuing to add in the three days since. Curtis Wright, ticker symbol CW, 9 billion market cap, another mid cap. Uh, decent report, nothing, or decent reaction to its earnings report. Didn't go like completely crazy, um, but this is clearly a pretty attractive trend. And then a smaller name, here is Tact Technologies, market cap of 116 million, so much smaller, um, but a very nice clean trend. And I talked about this company back in January, so it's nice to see that that's kind of following through. Um, other kind of like specialty smaller markets, so App Lovin, ticker symbol APP, market cap of about 20 billion uh, in the um, ad buying and app publishing market, and they have a new product which there's been a lot of discussion about and it's apparently doing much better than even bullish analysts had expected so that's the reason behind this move uh, but it's kind of encouraging to see what's happening here and also if we go over to the trade desk ttd is a market cap 40 i'm sorry is the ticker symbol about 44 billion market cap um more or less the same story there and obviously there's different dynamics going on with the respective companies but um they're in the same space so a bit of a trend there as far as trends go also biotech i look at a lot of small and micro cap biotech names and i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today but the ibb etf kind of shows the picture that it's been a much much better market for biotech than at any point in several quarters uh, if not years so we're seeing a lot of movement on individual names um Avantor is not biotech specifically, but it is bioprocessing. So it's indicating um, there on their last earnings call a pretty pretty decent report. You know, it, this is one of those names where uh, they're they're in a bunch of different businesses. But if the bioprocessing is picking up, that's good for um, drug production, drug trials, which leads to smaller micro cap. Um, biotech stocks. So we're interested to see how other companies like Replogen, ticker symbol R-G-E-N, uh, will report and what they'll have to say. Uh, also Danaher and um, Thermo Fisher have bioprocessing. But um, I always look at Avantor and then Replogen usually reports a little bit later, so they should report next week. Uh, and they'll, they'll have stuff to say about bioprocessing and in China and all that. So anyway, I uh, didn't mean to speak for that long on that. Lastly, uh, MedTech, Shockwave Medical having a decent report, uh, de decent reaction to their report. Um, they beat on both the top and bottom line. And there are more MedTech names out there, but I think we've kind of run out of time for today. So I'm going to cap it there. Uh, obviously, it's a long weekend. Um, President's Day Monday will be closed. The market will be closed. I hope you have a nice weekend. Later in the week, next week, FOMC minutes come out on Thursday. Uh, I also have a new issue of Cabot Early Opportunities coming out on Wednesday. So if you're a subscriber, check that out. If you're not, I uh, would love to have you sign up and check that out. Also, Wednesday, NVIDIA reports. Company has a market cap now of around $1.8 I'll pull up that chart. Uh, this is relevant because $1.82 trillion dollar market cap they've added over 500 billion in market cap this year and that accounts for 35 percent of the increase in total s p 500 market cap in 2024 so definitely going to be a stock to watch next week um going to want to keep an eye on that one so anyway guys i hope you have a nice long weekend and we will be back in touch with you next week take care